President Trump is getting ready to seek re-election in 2020. Brad Parscale is slated to be the president's next campaign manager. He ran then-candidate Trump's digital team back in 2016. Earlier, we spoke with Wired Editor-in-Chief Nick Thompson about his interaction with Brad Parscale via Twitter last night. Well, we've had a interesting exchange on Twitter with Brad Parscale, right? So we know he's been named campaign manager, and we've got a wired story just off um, all about him and about his rise and about what he's done and about how he ran the digital operation for Trump. And then right now there's an interesting Twitter conversation going on where we ran a story in Wired about the way that the Trump campaign used Facebook's advertising tools. Parscale then tweeted, finally Wired gets it right, this is a story that explains how it works. I then tweeted at him, I said, what is the exact price differential between what you paid for ads and what Hillary paid, because nobody's ever completely uncovered that important statistic. He says we paid one one hundred to one two hundred to what she paid, which then set a lot of things in motion and led to Hillary tweeting last night that there needs to be an investigation or not an investigation, that people need to look seriously at this and has led lots of other people to say that that is a serious problem if Facebook is charging one campaign less than the other. So there's like nine different debates embedded in that conversation, but what's interesting is that Parscale is very much saying we use social media extremely effectively during the campaign and, in fact, putting a number on it. But is that, um, Nick, is that what they're actually saying, that, in fact, Facebook charged them less, or is it that their efforts were significantly um, less than the effort that Hillary Clinton put into that campaign? Is it a matter of cost, or is it a matter of, uh, of impact, of effect? It's both. So Trump did a couple things differently from Hillary. First of all, he probably used uh, Facebook's sophisticated ad targeting tools, these things called custom audiences and lookalike audiences, more effectively than she did. He also used it for fundraising. She used it mainly for mobilization and get out the vote. But the really important and sort of contentious thing is that you can actually be charged different prices. And the reason for that is that Facebook wants the ads on its platform to be engaging. And so if you give an engaging ad, an ad that makes people like it or share it or whatever, you're actually going to be charged less. And they do that because there are a limited number of ad spaces on the platform and they want people to enjoy the ads. Trump's ads are more engaging than Hillary's. So there's nothing illegal about it. It's not like the prices are biased. It's just the nature of the way a tech platform's ad auction works. Secondly, we don't know this for certain, but I'm pretty confident a lot of people saw Trump's advertisements, liked them, or shared them on Facebook, which then further accelerates the number of people they reach. So Trump could end up paying significantly less. And so that's why Parscale was tweeting that we paid, that Trump paid one one hundredth of what Hillary paid. So it's nothing nefarious that Facebook did. It's certainly not deliberate. It's just one of the functions of the way the Facebook platform works. So listen, you call this guy, you know, Trump's digital guru. What do you think it says that Trump is putting him in charge of his 2020 uh, run for office? What sort of campaign are we looking at here? I think you're going to see a very digital campaign. I think that the um, smartest people in Trump world realize that he won for lots of reasons. Right? We you know, did talk about them a lot on CBS, but one of the reasons that's probably under-discussed is the effectiveness of his social media outreach and his ability for his message to resonate all over the country and with different groups, his ability to use private groups on Facebook, his ability to... Um, use micro-targeting. So, for example, one of the really smart things that Trump did is he would get a database of, for example, all the people who bought his hats. And he would enter their names into Facebook. And he would upload their names into Facebook. Facebook would then use their incredible data, right, because they have all the data on everything everybody does on Facebook, and basically all the data that everybody does on the web. Find people who are similar to the people who bought the hats but who haven't yet supported the Trump campaign and served them ads, right? That's a very smart way to target people. And so Trump used those tools during the summer as one of his main fundraising mechanisms. So, and Parscale was the, the guy leading that operation from San Antonio. So I think the fact that he's the named campaign manager suggests both that Trump likes him, Trump thinks he's a good person, Trump thinks he's a hard worker, but also that we're going to have a, um, a particularly digital operation in 2020. So, and Nick, um, one thing that we can't ignore, obviously, is that uh, there's an investigation, multiple investigations, into the role Russia played on Facebook. Facebook in supporting uh, one candidate over another, the issue of amplification. Um, did that play any sort of a role? Um, 
with respect to how effective the digital campaign, online campaign, the ads were? Yeah, so there are two threads here. One, the one thing that we definitely know is that the Russia propaganda wing did play a role supporting the Trump campaign, supporting the Trump campaign, also so in division. That was definitely a help to Trump. We don't know how much. I would suspect it's relatively small. The numbers that we've seen are relatively small. So it's illegal and helpful, but in a small way. That doesn't really tie into what Parscale did, right? Because they're not amplifying Parscale's ads. They're not spreading them further. They're not collaborating as far as we know. So the fact that Russia ran that operation, I don't think Sully's Parscale's accomplishment to the extent of the accomplishment. There is a second thread, and this is a thread that we don't know anything about, and that's the did either Parscale or Cambridge Analytica, the group that worked with them, actively cooperate or work with anybody in Russia? And this is what the House and Senate Intelligence Committees have looked at. Presumably, it is something that Mueller is looking at, but it's nothing about which anything has been released publicly, nor is it anything about which we have specific reason to think it happened. If, indeed, anything were to come out about that investigation, if Mueller's to put out something that, that shows cooperation between the Trump campaign and Russia, yeah, then Parscale is sunk. But Parscale has said publicly and privately that that didn't happen. He's testified in front of Congress. So my suspicion is that nothing happened and nothing's going to come out. If it does, he's in, he's in a world of trouble. Yeah, I just, you know, what Deb brought up was kind of exactly what I was thinking, Deb. Like, here we have, we're, we've come out of a campaign that was fraught with abuses related to social media and the digital arm of campaigning, which is not going to change. Like, this is the best way to reach out to people who you want to vote for you. And it's also cheaper than, you know, the traditional putting, putting your ads on television. Television. But it's fraught with landmines and problems and deceit. And here we have the guy who's the digital guru now going to be orchestrating the entire campaign. I just, it just makes me a little nervous moving forward, even though he may have had, you know, obviously nothing to do with what we saw the Russians do. Well, okay, so I guess they're. There are like a hundred nefarious sort of terrible things that happened that sort of helped the Trump campaign on social media and on the internet during the campaign. Most prominently, there's the IRA propaganda operations. There's the fake news stuff, right? So you've got like the Macedonians and the Bulgarians putting up, you know, bogus stories that help Trump, and they're just doing it for profit and for lulls. Um, then you've got the IRA, the Cambridge Analytica possible rush cooperation, which we don't know anything about. The one thing that we do know Parscale did that isn't good, and that could get him in trouble, is voter support. Depression. So we know that Parscale and the Trump campaign ran targeted Facebook ads telling African Americans not to vote, right, and showing them clips of Hillary Clinton using, I don't know, I think it was the super predator line. They got her in all sorts of trouble. We know that he wasn't just using Facebook to target people who are like people who bought Trump hats. He's also using Facebook to target African Americans who supported Obama, who he wants to stay home. And that's dark, right? And that may be, it may violate Facebook's terms of services. There's some chatter last night online that Facebook has already removed those posts. So to the extent Parscale was doing that and to the extent that comes out and to the extent that his hands are on it directly, that looks bad for him. But most, most of the malarkey and BS and lies and deceit that happened online um, during the 2016 campaign is removed from Parscale. It, you know, he's not involved in that. He's not doing it. It's other people. It's Russia propaganda artists. It's Macedonian teens. It's partisan liars. He's, in a, he's like doing separate things.